Good morning. I hope you're doing well. I hope uh, you had a good weekend and you're ready to, to, to blow into this new week and really into a new month. Here comes February. We've been here a couple of days, but it's going to be a, a great month, I know. You know, um, culture and their view of Jesus. For the most part, culture has a good view of Jesus. If people are honest and they compare him with, with other teachers, whatever you want to call them from, from the past, you know, most people like him. They like what he has to say. They like that he pushes back against um, religious bigotry. They, they like how he is compassionate and kind. And, and all that's good. So culture, for the most part, has a good view of Jesus. But culture tends to draw a line. And they have a good view, but they don't have a high view. They don't have a he's everything view. Because once you walk into that viewpoint, you have to decide what you're going to do with him. Because when you have a high view of Jesus, you have a he's everything view. Now you have to decide if you're going to follow him or not, and if you're going to allow him to impact your life. So culture will often have a good view of Jesus, but keep him at arm's length. Yeah, but we're not going to go fully to, to who he is and not have that, that high view, if you will. But what view of Jesus does Scripture have? And as we saw yesterday, we're in this great passage, John chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. And, and notice what this says. And for this reason, and this, by the way, this reason goes back to last week's story of Jesus healing the man in the pool on the Sabbath. Okay, which they thought was a no-no, so they wanted him dead. For this reason, therefore, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Because he not only was breaking the Sabbath, but was calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. In the law, saying your God was blasphemy, death. Therefore Jesus answered and was saying to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, unless it is something he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in the same way. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself is doing. And the Father will show him greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. The one who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment but has passed out of death into life. This is Jesus talking. So this is Jesus sharing his view of him. Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm one with God. I am God. And you'll hear some people say, well, Jesus never said that he was God. He was calling his, God his own father, making himself equal with God. Yeah, he did. You know, and that was blasphemy. That ultimately resulted in his death and his crucifixion. And we know that. But that's Jesus, and we see this in other places. As we move through the Gospel of John, uh, we'll see that even more. But he says, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. We see in Scripture, he is the, he is the, the image, the invisible image of God. He is it. So, so that's what we see. And so here's the question. What am I going to do with it? That's really what it comes down to. Am I going to ignore the full picture of who Christ is? You know, I'm going to see some good things. I'm going to see some cool things. But am I going to ignore the complete truth that Jesus is God and Jesus is the way to salvation? Because only he can bring that. If I ignore the truth, it will lead to disobedience. It will lead to rejecting truth. It will probably lead to rejecting Christ's authority for salvation in my life which will lead to missing that and therefore separation, according to Scripture, in eternity from God. That's where that leads. And we need to be very, very frank about that. Ignoring who Jesus says he is and who Scripture, 
correspondingly says who he is, that's where it leaps, according to Scripture. So I can ignore it, or I can embrace it. I can say, yeah, I, I embrace that, Jesus. I embrace that you are fully God, fully man. I embrace that you and the Father are one. I embrace who you say you are. Now, where does that lead? That will lead to eternal life because I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. So it will lead to eternal life. It will lead to a life that can be full and meaningful. It will lead to the peace and joy and satisfaction that comes only from him. Those are the things to which it will lead. So really, when I look at a passage like 18 through 25 here, or 18 through 24 of John chapter 5, it's really a passage that at its end has two roads. And those two roads are determined by my viewpoint. A nice but low view of Christ will lead away from Christ and away from eternity. A high view of who Christ is will lead us toward him. So here's the challenge today. How is your view of Jesus impacting your life? If you have a high view for salvation, not only should it lead to that, but it should guide you in your daily walk because you're going to refer to him. You're going to listen to him. And he will mold you and make you into who he wants you to be. Will you adopt and live in a high view of Christ? If you're choosing a low view, why? Why not take the next step? That's the challenge before us. So I want to encourage you to evaluate how do you understand Jesus? To come back and look at this passage and then allow him to lead you down the road that seeks him, serves him, and walks with him. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending Christ to die for us. And thank you, Jesus, for coming. May we be challenged in our view. May we be challenged, seek you and seek your face and seek that right high view of the Lord Jesus. Father, sometimes we just don't realize that we have to make some decisions and we need to address how we look at life. So give us wisdom in doing that with you and in this, in this situation. Now, may we honor you. May we, in your grace, discover and know you. In Christ's name, amen. All right. Hey, uh, Wednesday night, we'll have our monthly gathering, macho gathering. So after Bible study, we'll be in the fellowship hall. Come hang out a little bit. Love for you to come to Bible study and then hang out. If you're involved in ministry in some other angle, come hang out with us then as well. Once again, as I mentioned last week, daddy-daughter dance. Coming up, a couple of weeks, the 17th. It's going to be a great time. I hope you can join us. Have a great week. As always, if you need me, reach out. I'll minister to you in any way I can. Love and appreciate you. Bye-bye.